Hello, this is an assessment of a Knight K10 made in 1969 and it's in an institution and really needs work. It's been played a huge amount for piano of this period. I see it's been fitted with safety casters, which is a good idea because the idea is to stop it toppling over. But knights have a extremely heavy frame and normally at this point there's a, there's a block of wood that juts out here and the caster's attached to that and the black block's been taken off. Um, so if you look at any domestic knight of this period, it has got an extra block of wood at the back as well. The soundboard is in good condition, though it's a bit dirty. Now, interesting, the right pedal doesn't look incredibly worn. That's probably a testimony to the good construction of a knight piano, which is one of the very best small pianos that are made in the world in, in the 60s. Now, without uh, looking inside the piano, you can tell by moving the keys from side to side that they've had lots of wear. There's a lot of sideways play. Now there's a, a little what we call a cricket bat adjuster under there that you can use to take up that slack. I don't suppose the felt's worn through so much that it can't be done. Now we take this key out, we'll have a look at the cricket bat underneath. Uh, that lifts up very sim very simply on a night. It's such a well-made piano. Um, there's the felt, you see. Now, if you look at the cricket bat here, it's cricket bat because of the shape, that's why it's called that. And the felt you can see is worn, obviously where it, um, it's worn where it's been going up and down. But as the cricket bat's turned sideways, then a different part of the felt will wear. And uh, it shouldn't be necessary to change the felt. Um, obviously, if you're fully restoring a Steinway Grand or something, you might you will do that normally. But um, on the night, we want to try and economise to a certain extent. Though it's an extremely well built piano. Uh, now looking at the hammers, if we move over to them, actually before we do that, the tapes are all in perfect condition. So what's happened is it's been played a lot, um, not so much with the pedal as we've seen, but the hammers, that is excessive wear on a, on a piano from 1969, so they've been played a huge amount and uh, huge indentations of the strings on the, the hammers on the strings there. And now there's too much hammer hitting the strings, so too much surface area of hammers hitting the string. Sorry, I'll try and focus this a bit better. There we are. Too much of the hammer is hitting the string, so the harmonics are dying out. It's, not, it's deadening the harmonics and not bringing out a nice clear sound. So replacing the hammers would be wonderful, but on this piano, I think uh, that's, that's a huge amount of work on any piano. So there's just about enough felt left to reface it. So I think refacing will make a huge difference to the tone of this piano. Uh, the damper is in good condition. Let's see them lifting off. In fact, I pressed the pedal right down and they're not lifting off at all. Uh, so that's obviously is you because of use of the pedal. And that just needs a simple adjustment really on the pedal and then they'll lift off. But they're literally, the bass ones are lifting off a very little bit if you have a look. And the treble, very little bit here, here as well. But uh, some of them, most of them not lifting off at all. Uh, I'm not quite sure where, where that's never been adjusted before. So a simple turn of this screw and uh, the pedal will work properly. I'm sure some of the dampers are out of line, but most of the job's done just by turning that screw downwards. Um, and uh, look, just looking at the bridge, which is in pretty, pretty perfect condition. You'd expect it to be for a night. Alfred Knight was very fastidious in the way he made his pianos. There's the K10 for the model K10. Also look for sideways play in the hammers by now. But again, because it's such a good action, there's very, very little. There's one there, it moves sideways a bit, but I'm trying to get them all to move sideways and really they're as tight as you'd hope them to be. So uh, that's very good news. Um, and if we play the piano in the middle, now it sounds thin. It maybe lost a bit of its tone there, but it's mainly due to, well, be out of tune as well, but due to hammers. It's nearly at concert pitch though, but it does sound soggy and unpleasant. The hammers are so important to the tone of the piano. There's nothing wrong with the strings. If you listen to that, it's got a good underlying tone. And the toning pins are tight, as you'd expect again on a night piano. We sell a lot of night pianos. It's one of the best makes in the world of this size of piano. Exported around the world, it stands up to incredible extremes of climate, as Knight proudly announced on their pianos. So underlying, there's a good sound, but it has been used a lot. There's a little bit of slack in the keys, if I play this, uh, this is G, middle, middle G, you can see that the whippen, as we call it, moves before the hammer. So that needs taking up. It will, it will play, it will feel a lot better just doing that actually. 
So that's an assessment of a 9K, 9K10. I can't sustain it at the moment because the right hand pedals, sustain pedal is not really, that's maximum sustain on it. But it just sustains slightly. And Knight's are wonderful pianos. Steinway had them in, in their hall in London because in my mind the Steinways that were around at the time of this piano weren't as good as this piano, anything like, the small Steinways, sorry. So we didn't seem to make a particularly good small piano at that time. Amazingly stable they are. And even with the hammers incredibly worn, the sustained pedal is still quite pleasant to play. But obviously, it needs a lot of work. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, this is an assessment of an Aeolian upright piano made in between 1915 and 1930, not quite sure when actually, probably I guess 1920, I may be wrong. Um, and we're assessing this piano, there's also assessed tonight, uh, assessment I've done today as well, in the same institution. Um, they want to know what to do with the pianos, which one to keep or both of them, or just as an opinion generally. This is a uh, right in the centre of Oxford. And this, I'm zeroing in on the casters. The other one had safety casters, which was ideal, because it kept the pedals low. This one's got, uh, as you can see, pedals raised up a bit too high, really, because the casters are a bit big. Safety casters would be better. So it's slightly uncomfortable to play, though, of course, if you want a lot of legroom, it's good to have high casters. That's an 85 note keyboard. There's a lot of pianos with that time would be, let's put it maybe 1920s, more confirmation of that, I think. Um, and you can see there's a bit chipped some of these keys. These, these are not, these are plastic, they weren't ivory originally, these are the original keys. Now, Aeolian is said to be an American company uh, making pianos under about 60 different names. Well, in the UK you find the main names made by this company are Steck and uh, Weber and there's a reasonable number of aliens too. Steck, I think, is the most common. And uh, there's a reasonable number of Stecks and uh, not so many Vabers and aliens in the UK. Uh, zeroing down on here, there has been some reconditioning work done. Um, these have been re refaced. Um, and they're sort of as thin as you'd want them to be, really. I think if you did any more work, you'd re replace them. But they're, they're not incredibly indented since they've been refaced. And now, the tone of the piano, very thin round here. So I can't do much about that unless you take the whole piano a bit. Very point reasonable. And quite a strong bass, so that's pleasant. Now there's one bass string replaced here, and uh, the piano is about eight, seven beats flat from concert pitch, so it does need pitch raising. I don't know if those are new tuning pins there. There's a different colour. Let's just have a quick look. No, they were the same size as the others, reasonably small pins, so originals. I don't think they've changed the tuning pin on this one. When you restring a, a put a new string on, you should really change the tuning pin. Um, though maybe it wasn't necessary, maybe it was already very tight. Uh, we normally do that. Now, if this is pitch raised, um, because of the broken string, you'd be slightly worried about breaking another bass string. Though if they're lubricated here first, um, and then taken down and back up. That will solve the problem, but I want to f focus in on here because certainly stack pianos, this angle is too great. And when you uh, put upward pressure at, at this point, it, it tends to, to snag a bit here and therefore the string will break. Cause there's, so we've often taken these tuning pins out a bit um, before, to, so the angle is not so acute. It's, it's these two bottom ones here, the top ones are all right. It's just the bottom ones that are the problem. They found that with stacks particularly. Um, that's the make which that's happened on more often than another when I've been tuning them. Now on the night we looked at how much sideways play there was and there's not so much on this as there was on the night. And uh, say the hammerware, this has been refaced. This has had new tapes and there's a little bit of slack if we look there. About the same amount as on the night actually. So that could do with being taken up. And down the bottom of the bridge looks fine. So they're reasonably well made pianos. Um, Stex, Aeolians, Vabers, and uh, I can't see any of the soundboard looks fine as well. So, of course, the night we didn't look at the soundboard song because it was obviously going to be perfectly okay. 
I say obviously, I've never seen one that's not. Um, and these bridges, sometimes you get cracks on the edge of the on the end of the bridges, and then one of these pins pulls out of line, and then you get a buzzing on the string. Uh, so that needs recapping ideally when that happens. There's no problems on this one at all, just that broken string, which, as I say, worries us a bit when it comes to replacing the, their English style eyes on these and instead of German, which means they're easy to put, take on and off if you wanted to twist them or change them. Now, these don't really need either. Having said that, the tone of these is thin, but I think that's down to the construction of the piano generally. It's not an expensively made, but it's a well-made piano, but not an, expensive, not an expensively made piano. So it's got plenty of life left in it. I notice these has got moth paper in it. That's, uh, I don't know what was on that, lavender maybe, or something that would uh, deter moths from coming. Good idea, really. Um, certainly moths attack pianos, and it's something worth bearing in mind if you're in a, an area where you do get, get moth. So that's the second of two pianos in this institution. This is an Aeolian, and uh, I've been called in to try and help them decide what to do. Is it worth working on the pianos? Is it better to change them? Well, I would have thought if it was, if they were going to seriously be used for concerts, then you'd want to change them both. Really, neither of them are going to uh, be suitable for discerning musicians. This one is not expensively made in the first place. The night for a small piano was um, one of the best small pianos made. So I think if the night was reconditioned, it would plenty of life left in it. This one is pleasant-ish. Difficult decision to make, but um, as I say, for use for concerts, then um, you would need another piano. But uh, they can both be reconditioned and improve enormously. Thank you very much for listening.